Hi, this is a quick look at the electrical system on Sanssouci. Uh, first, um, important things to know. One, I'm not a marine electrician, so uh, no promises this is accurate. Another is that it's a big topic. Um, I picked a few things that um, I think about when I run the boat, but, um, but this has meant nothing more than to kind of hopefully interest you in the subject so that you'll dig deeper. It really is critical. If you don't know about electricity on your boat, you're not going to be a happy camper if you're going to try doing world cruising. Uh, and parts of it, uh, it's hard to know who's watching this video and what your level of sophistication is, so um, I'm kind of all over the map in this and do what I can do and just bear with it. So uh, first off, I guess the obvious big picture is that um, aboard the boat there's a lot of different equipment that provides electricity, such as uh, shore power. You can get shore power for electricity. The generators will generate electricity. The batteries will store electricity and give it to you. And then there's other things that uh, eat electricity or take it, you know, like lights, refrigerators, televisions. Um, uh, some technology or some terminology that's good to know. Um, the biggest ones are volts, amps, and watts. You should get uh, very comfortable with those worlds. I can't uh, teach that to you in the next couple of minutes. I would suggest getting some sort of an uh, intro to electricity book and reading about those. Good to know about AC and DC and what those mean. And uh, there's a formula that I use almost every day, which is uh, watts equal volts times amps. If you know uh, what voltage a circuit is and you know how many watts it is, you can compute the amps or vice versa. Um, okay, now to the uh, interesting bits. Uh, let's see, Sanssouci I think of as having four completely independent um, electrical systems. Uh, there's a 12 volt system that's used for some older electronics, uh, not much on Sanssouci's 12 volt. Most things are 24 volt DC, and by that I mean uh, the newer electronics, the lighting, some pumps. Uh, there's also a uh, 120 volt system that powers electrical outlets around the boat. This is uh, electricity like if you're in the U.S. you'd have at home. Then there's a uh, 240 volt system which powers the uh, heavy appliances such as air conditioning, stove, dive compressor, uh, washer and dryer. Uh, okay, let's, uh, why is all this important to know? Um, because of power management. On a boat uh, there's only a finite amount of electricity available at any point in time. Um, if you don't um, keep track of how much electricity you're using you can uh, easily run the boat out of electricity, which uh, can wreck your day, and uh, also lead to, uh, if you overdraw the system or overtax the system, you can um, uh, burn up wires, you can have dead batteries, you can, um, all kinds of bad things can happen, including electrical fires. So you really have to get on top of electricity on the boat and um, kind of build up patterns so that you know what your boat can and can't do like how many hours a day you have to run the generator or a big one on Sanssouci is making sure Roberta talks to me before she turns anything major on so that uh, we don't overburden the system. Um, shore power. I talked about different things that provide electricity. Well, uh, one of the obvious ones is shore power and if you're in the U.S. and with a U.S. type boat that's fairly straightforward but as you go around the world you discover quickly that shore power is different in every country and uh, sometimes in every marina and even within a marina from pedestal to pedestal within a marina. So um, if you travel around the world this can be a big deal and because we do I've got an extra device that's called an Atlas shore power converter that takes in all the different voltages and uh, kinds of electricity we see around the world and turns it into what they expect in the US which is single phase 60 hertz uh, dual 110 volt lines and I'll come back to what that means. Um, there's generators. That's another device that um, generates electricity and on Sanssouci we've got two different ones and uh, their purpose is to convert diesel fuel into uh, 240 volt um, current. Two lines of 120 volts. I said 110 volt here but it's 120 volt. Okay, so on Sanssouci we've got a few different sources of electricity. We've got uh, shore power which I get to through the uh, Atlas. We've got our batteries, which um, are converted to uh, 120 and 240 volt electricity. We've got um, the generators, the two generators that convert fuel. And, um, you know, obviously, well, we've also got switches that will um, choose which of those power sources we wanted. And I put a tip here, um, even though it doesn't kind of relate, but is really critical. 
which is uh, if you're switching power sources, uh, I actually have a selector box here where I can say which of these four places I want to take electricity. And uh, an important tip for those that uh, have boats is to uh, turn the loads off before you, uh, the major loads, before you uh, switch power sources. So if you're going to switch from one generator to another, just turn off the air conditioning, turn off um, the stove, any other uh, dryer, anything that might put a serious load on the system. Trust me, you'll be happier if you do. Uh, I've been saying that um, the uh, electricity on San Susi is 120 or 240 volt. And the reason being, the wiring has, um, around the boat, has uh, four wires typically. Um, and on those wires, there's a wire labeled uh, L1 that's red, one that's black that uh, is L2, and then neutral and ground. If you were to take a voltmeter and measure from L1 to L2, you're going to get 240 volts, but from L1 to neutral, you only get 120. So uh, by having it this way, and having 220 volt wires, this is kind of the US standard, um, you're able to get 120 or 240 depending on what you need. And while I'm talking about sources of electricity, places to get electricity around the boat, we can't forget that uh, there is, I mentioned we have a 12 volt system and a 24 volt system. There's a 12 volt battery and there's also a 24 ba battery bank and uh, some devices are powered directly by the 24 volt battery bank or the 12 volt such as um, uh, mostly the pilot house electronics on the lighting uh, that comes straight off the 24 volt battery bank. Uh, okay, so with all those different electrical systems, as you can imagine, I've got different electrical panels which uh, provide the electricity for them. Uh, there's a 240 volt panel, a 110 volt panel, a 24 volt panel, a 12 volt panel, and there's selectors that say uh, what our source of electricity is. There's also, um, I mentioned the inverter, which converts uh, battery power to um, uh, 120 and 240 volt power. There's a control panel for it. And there's also a control panel to control the Atlas, the shore power converter. Um, okay, let's look at the um, 24 volt service panel. Each item, um, or sometimes a group of items, will have its own breaker. A breaker just uh, gives me a quick way to uh, shut off power and it also provides a, um, for each device, um, the breaker is set to the number of amps that device uses and will trip if for some reason the device is using too many, uh, which can happen if a pump freezes up or something that starts drawing too many amps and can um, fry wires, but better is to trip one of these breakers. So this gives me a way to quickly turn things off, but on the 24 volt panel you can see it's mostly on lighting, um, uh, electronics, and uh, pumps. On the 12 volt system, this really is only um, basically uh, 12 volt is being phased out on um, on the bigger boats. So uh, there's some old devices uh, such as the um, VHF radios uh, that are mostly available and still in 12 volt to this day. So um, most modern boats, you'll see a 12 volt battery sitting in the pilot house, like in San Susi, with its own independent battery charger, and it's powering the um, older. Um, you know, a Furino gear, the uh, pilot house electronics. Uh, the 120 circuits um, are kind of the uh, standard appliances, electrical outlets, and you'll notice here I say split to two legs, and on the um, panel itself you'll see two different legs of uh, 120 electricity. And the goal, um, if a, you know, when somebody designed the system on San Susi was to uh, split the loads, so they'd be fairly equal because say the generator is putting out um, some number of kW and then remember I showed in the wiring that there were uh, two 120 volt circuits you want the uh, load on each of those circuits to be as close to each other as you can get it and so that's why we're split to leg one leg two with about half the loads on each one and uh, the biggest thing this does is all the electrical outlets around the boat but also the small appliances then there's the uh, 240 volt stuff. This is the uh, heavy equipment that needs lots of electricity like the davit for raising and lowering the tender, the stove, the air conditioning, the washer dryer, and it's got its own panel and even with that end it's broken into uh, separate sub panels. Down at the bottom you see a whole panel just devoted to the air conditioning and um, that uses a lot of electricity so it's on the 240 volt panel. And also the feed to the inverters which um, is what uh, runs all the 120 circuits around. Uh, the next page. Um, electricity 
gets confusing when you're kind of working with 24 volt and 12 volt and 120 volt and everything else and you're trying to figure it out. You have um, a generator, say, or shore power, which tend to be measured in terms of uh, kilowatts or amps, and uh, it gets confusing. For instance, if you have a uh, you know 50 amp cable coming into your boat with um, 240 volts on it, there's some number of kilowatts in that, and it's nice to compare it to your generator and be able to say um, how many uh, kilowatts equivalent am I getting uh, with my uh, generator. Well, if you have a 50 amp cable, or let's say a 30 amp cable at 240 volts, if you multiply 30 by 240, you get roughly 7 kW, so it's kind of like, you know, equivalent to a 7 kW generator. And uh, I like to think of everything as kW, then um, it makes it easier in my mind to kind of think of what percentage of my generator it is and whether it's more or less. Uh, confusing, yes, but um, but works. Okay, uh, batteries. Let's uh, do a quick talk about batteries for people. I mean, the obvious thing is that they're used to store energy so that um, you can store it and use it later. And batteries, when batteries are bought, they're described in terms of how many amp hours they store. And what an amp hour is, is how many amps they can deliver for how many hours, what voltage they are, um, which typically is uh, 12 volts, although certainly there's 9 volt batteries and 1.5 and volt batteries, um, how fast they can deliver electricity. There's some uh, batteries that can only deliver a little amount of electricity at a time, and some that can deliver, such as in using um, uses like starting batteries, where you need a ton of current out of that battery really quickly then uh, batteries, you can talk about how fast they can recharge and how many times they can be recharged before um, they reach the end of their life. Uh, for a typical uh, battery on a boat, um, AGM battery like what we're using, uh, that number is uh, around 100 amp hours and um, they can typically only be taken down about 50 percent before charging. So um, on a typical Nordhaven like mine, you'll have around 2,000 amp hours, meaning 20 batteries at 100 amp hours each. And since they can only be taken down about 50 percent, that means of those 2,000 you can only use about 100 amp hours. And um, it's um, actually, I guess, an extra piece of it is that my boat is has a 24 volt um, uh, 24 volt system, so there's really twice as many batteries in a uh, 2,000 amp hour bank because um, it takes two batteries wired together in order to get a 24 volt battery. So two 12 volts together, two 12 volt batteries together give you 24 volts, and uh, that would be 100 amps at 24 volts. So to get 2,000 amps, you would need uh, twice that many batteries, around 40 batteries. So obviously, it's a big, heavy battery bank. And um, that's what it takes to run this boat. And you can only discharge half of it, which uh, means, like I said, you've got a thousand amp hours available. And if you divide that by the um, uh, 24 volts, you can get the number of kilowatts that's in effect stored for later retrieval in those that battery bank. Uh, efficiency. This is something important to think about uh, because anytime you move energy or kilowatts from one place to another, like put them in the battery and get them back later, you lose a little bit of that energy. And um, why it's important is that um, in some cases, like your generator, um, here I said your generator might be 50 percent, 90 percent efficient, but that's way wrong. That's a typo in the slide. Uh, most generators are actually about 35 percent efficient, meaning as they convert fuel into uh, kilowatts, uh, about two-thirds of it just gets wasted and sent out the exhaust pipe. Um, but in uh, the inverters, when they're converting um, uh, the electricity from that's in the batteries to kilowatts uh, that you can use at 120 volts around the boat, they're much better. They're around 90 percent efficient, meaning only about 10 percent gets lost to heat. All that said, when you're running the inverters and you're losing that 10 percent to heat, it uh, puts heat into um, the lazarette on this boat where I've got the batteries, and uh, it gets hot back there. Uh, the inverters. Let's see. Um, you know, here I said that the inverters have two functions. One is to um, convert battery power to 120 and 240 volt power. The other is to um, charge the house battery bank. And it can be really confusing when I'm looking at the kilowatt grain on the boat because um, 
normally um, the inverters are sensing that the generator is running and just passing through the electricity from um, the generator to all the different appliances and it's as if the inverter inverters weren't there at all but sometimes when uh, the generator is not around and the boat's being run strictly through the inverters um, power is coming from nowhere except out of the battery bank so the inverters um, well and then uh, when I'm running the boat I can um, sometimes find that I'm using more electricity than I thought because in addition to um, all the normal consumers of electricity the inverters are dragging down extra electricity to charge our house battery bank so um, one of the bigger um, drains of electricity on the boat can be the inverters themselves and I have to keep dialed down um, how much power they're diverting to uh, battery charging so that um, I don't suddenly find myself out of electricity which has happened on this boat uh, let's see, what do boats do that don't have that international po shore power converter that I have as they travel around the world? Well, a quick answer is most boats don't travel inter internationally, but um, there is a workaround that um, a lot of boats do. A seabird, another boat that we're traveling around with now does, which is effectively to run the boat and all the electrical loads off their inverter and off their uh, house bank. and. Um, some devices on boats aren't run through the uh, inverters, like uh, the heavy loads typically are not on an inverter, like washer dryer. So um, Nordhaven, I, when they build the boats, knows uh, knows about this workaround and builds the um, air conditioning and the heavy appliances in, so that um, they're pretty um, accepting of wide ranges of voltage and um, uh, particularly hertz which is the 50 cycle or 60 cycle power and if you can get 250 uh, or 240 volt uh, 50 cycle or 60 cycle power um, the air conditioning and the washer and dryer will accept it they're not very picky and use battery chargers that are uh, pretty flexible and will accept a lot of different power from around the world so that on the boat um, the heavy appliances are being run direct from shore power because they're forgiving and all of the other stuff on the boat which is less forgiving all the electronics are being powered through the inverters that are being powered by a battery charger that comes off of a um, international power whatever it is and that's it and I doubt any of this made any sense but, uh, but somebody asked so uh, there you go thank you